So it, we, at, at Bancroft, uh, they use uh, Harris's CCP solution, which is based on Profiler for financials and CCP for clinical data. And they've, they've built out a big system for incident tracking. And so for the last couple of years, they've been using uh, uh, an incident um, an incident tool uh, to track incidences. And it's, it's everything from abuse, neglect, verbal abuse, restraints. I mean, it's it's got a lot of stuff in it that they track. <clears throat> and we've helped to, uh, to put together a few little data marts for them um, so that they can look at that data. So one, one thing that I always like to start off with, this was a, a slide from a few years ago um, in The Economist. And just the importance of data, you know, if, if you can if you can see that the data now is our is one of our most it's maybe not the most but it's it's one of the most valuable resources that we have now is all this data and so like i mentioned at the beginning we're great at entering data and so much of the conference um at, at the harris conference and, and at other conferences is so much of it is about entering data and not enough of it is about getting value from that data and it's just a super valuable resource that we just don't tap into to the extent that that we probably should be, um, and it's it's just a great amount of there's a great amount of value to be had from it. And I just talk about talked a little bit about just the quantity of data that we're collecting through all of our EMRs is astounding, and uh, there's a lot of value to be had from it. I, I did show this graph, which is kind of interesting, and I've shown this before at a conference before. But does anybody know what this is without? reading it reading the text i guess it's in french does anyone know what this this chart is this this was developed in 1869 by dr charles millar in france and it's still to this day considered one of the best data visualizations of all time even though it's over 150 years old um, this is anybody want to guess once i tell you it'll become clear this is a graphical depi depiction of Napoleon's 1812-1813 march from Paris to uh, Moscow and back. And the width of the line represents the size of his army. So he starts out here on the left in Paris with 422,000 men. And, and the reason why I showed a video clip is I, sh I showed the silly clip from A Princess Bride where, the, where the, 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 one of the characters says, you know, the two great blunders are, uh, you know, uh, taking unseriously a Sicilian when death is on the line. I don't know if you remember that one. But the second great folly is you don't start a land war in Asia, right? But this graph illustrates why you don't do that. Because... Napoleon started with 422,000 men, marched to Moscow, as you, and you can see men were dropping as he, as he marched, and the width of the line is the size of his army. And he reached Mar Moscow with 10,000, left Moscow, came back with 1,000. So the black line here at the end is, represents 1,000 soldiers. So from 422,000 soldiers to 1,000, <coughs> excuse me, is, is represented in this graph. So it, it, like I said, it's, it's considered even to this day, one of the, one of the most interesting and effective data visualizations. Um, and in fact, I, you can buy posters of this and things like that because it's it's very interesting. And like I said, it's over 150 years old. So we, we talked just a little bit about the project at at um, Bancroft and how the intent is to you know aggregate a ton of data. Their incident reporting system aggregates a ton of data, and um, the it's just really hard to get the data out of it. And so they needed a way to be able to you know cut or drag and drop and and slice and dice and look for trends and, and non-technical users had to be able to use it. And so um, by utilizing the pinnacle cubes, they can, they can do exactly that. And non-technical users now use this every single day and they manage all of their incident reporting. Um, 
I'll just skip through some of these. You know, it was literally thousands of times faster than doing it any other way. Um, it came up, there were actually 200 measures added. They added 100 different dimensions, um, 750 dimension attributes that they added. So just a ton of data, a lot of averages, sums, totals, and formulas. And you don't have to be a technical person to use it. You just can get into Excel, drag and drop. Power BI, drag and drop, and, and they do, I mean, it's amazing the stuff that they do with it um, out of the data warehouse. And they're just getting tremendously good data. So, so here's some charts, you know, you can see they've focused on various areas. Um, these are some areas, these are dashboards that they created in Power BI. You know, they wanted to see their fall counts. They wanted to see the the reasons for the fall, you know, are they accidental, seizure related, near falls, um, what's the current count, and they put a bunch of things in place. It was kind of interesting at the conference. They they have a, a whole bunch of programs to help prevent falls now, and they're seeing they're seeing results, and they're able to track it and measure it. Um, <clears throat> I, I can't remember what what they were. I don't know if you remember Ginger. What what some of the measures were I wish Fina were on the call but um, they they've done some things regarding fall prevention which have been effective I in think fact I I know that oh, Fina also talked a little bit about like or and I don't know if this was something they were already doing or something they were thinking about doing was not just tracking falls but like whether falls resulted in injury and that like because I think there was some discussion about you know, for some people, falling is just kind of part of what they're Ill part of maybe a medical condition they have, but helping people fall in ways or be in environments where when they fall, they aren't injured. So well, that was something. I think that about. sounds right. In fact, I thought about the, I don't know if it's a real thing, but I, I think they're developing like an airbag people can wear on their hips. Have you seen that? And it detects if they're falling and it, 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 it deploys an airbag that, so you don't break your hip. Hmm. I was going to ask her about that. Anyway, <laughs> so you, can see, you can see fall count, you know, missed appointments, count of medication errors. You know, they've had a kind of a varying amount of those, but this enables them to track some of their more important metrics uh, that they enter in the system. Um, this one was uh, regarding these are their various locations, and these I think are just overall incident counts. And they're just seeing a pretty dramatic drop because they're they're able to track these. And these dashboards actually have a big monitor in their in their offices, and they actually show these dashboards, and so people can see and the staff can see the effects of their programs uh, graphically displayed. This, these are just some other charts. These are all the different loca locations here in the middle, the count of incidences. Over here on the right, you can see all the different kinds, medication, physical injury, behavioral incidents, suicide, abuse, aggression, neglect, medical hospitalization, death, fire, disaster. And, and one thing that FINA realized is that when you get down here to, where is it here, property, property destruction, maybe it's not on this one, maybe we'll get to it, but Bancroft was shocked at how much property destruction they had. Is that, I understand that right, Ginger? I think that's what she mentioned. How much, how many different, how, how much higher the incidences of property damage were at their agencies? Yeah, I remember that. And I remember she also talked about um, that they did kind of like a deeper analysis of like so their emergency restraints. And that it turned out that a, a huge proportion of any variation was basically like one or two patients. And so rather than like, putting it what what she was mentioning was that the data really helped them see that like being able to analyze the data in more depth really helped them see that they that the way to address the problem probably wasn't that they needed like vast policy changes across all their programs that they probably needed very specific well-designed treatment plans for specific individuals to help prevent emergency uh, restraints so i thought that was like a great application of data which is well our numbers are going up and sometimes we might our reaction might be let's do a bunch of stuff when really like it might be a very specialized problem in a very specific place so that was good information too excellent so here, here they also want to track how long it takes to get to to um to get their incidents 
catalog and submitted. And so this chart at the top left is percent of incident reports by days from uh, creation to initial approval. And they just started tracking it. And you can just see that they're just getting a lot more timely reporting of their incidences. Um, See, let's go to the next one here. We'll just kind of skim through some of these. This is the falls. These are the falls kind of in detail. And you can see that they're they're improving the fall situation at their agency by tracking those. Uh, I think this is fall by location um, at all of their different different locations around New Jersey, Conne I think they're in New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, I believe. Anyway, they've just they've just got a bunch of dashboards. Here's another one that just tracks incidences, and and they have a, a these are kind of really emphasized. These are really really emphasized in their agency, um, and they let their 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 staff kind of have feedback. Like I said, they put these on on the wall. This is one on length of stay. They want to track length of stay in real time. Um, in their different facilities so one one interesting thing really quick is is that they want to they have to debrief people when they have an incident and they have to um they have to report their comfort level with with the incident and it can be a, a real issue right and so um re really quickly i wanted to show here something that we're working on with them so what we can do in Power BI is we can take the data, and because the data is in the cubes. Oh, Sean, are you trying to? Oh, there, oh there, it wasn't showing. There your goes. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. I had to switch, so I was pausing it for a second between stuff. So, um, so one thing that is is interesting is that they is they want to be able to track the comfort level the staff is having with the restraints. I mean, these are these can be potentially very violent incidences where they're you know, restraining a person, right? Who's violent, and so they they want um, they want the the restrainer or the staff to exhibit a high level of comfort. So we just we just look we we're, we're able to look at these at these uh, the amount of um, restraints by comfort level now. And so I just dropped that into a Power BI out of the cube. And because the cube is so much faster than a relational query, often thousands of times faster, you can do a lot of prediction. And there's a there's actually in Power BI kind of a predictive engine that you can set up. And I just, you know, we just quickly showed this, you know, we can actually extend this out into the future. So so the blue line is the are the actual uh, number of restraints by date with the the count of how many that the staff was comfortable with and um so you can see here if we you know if we look at these high dates they're usually weekdays and these low dates are usually like sundays you know where where there's not a lot going on but we can also predict out into the future you know so we can we did this last week i guess i could refresh this and we could see go into the future let's go into the future here a little bit maybe it'll let me refresh this Let's see here. Well, yeah, maybe I've got it set to not refresh right now. But you can see here when we did this at the conference, we could project out into the into the future into October, and we could predict, you know, the next Sunday would be, you know, 10:6. What it was going to be, um, you know, they were going to have, you know, 1.23 events, you know, going up to the the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, it would actually has a, an algorithm to, to to run that time series and give us a regression on that time series. So that's the kind of the new thing we're getting into with this data is is um, you know the the predictive analytics with this and being able to um, kind of look into the future uh, at the data. So that that was it, kind of in a nutshell. I, I didn't mean to take as much time as I did, but it's just a really good really good uh, project. It's yielding huge results for Bancroft, um, and it's really helping them zero in on their incidences and helping, you know, prevent injury, prevent incidences, help their clients with better outcomes. And, you know, the data is showing that to be true. So, Thank you so much, Sean. 
If you have any questions or you would like more information, please email us at info at phidw.com or give us a call at 971-409-6931. Thank you so much.